All right, everybody. We are in New Hyde Park, Long Island. Not too far outside of the uh, city limits, meaning Queens, New York. You know, about 10, 15 minute ride. Now, why are we here today? Well, we are here today because we're going to the location we're on July 28th, 1980. John Favara is abducted by John Gotti's crew. Nice, beautiful Sunday morning. Find the lab, we're on Jericho Turnpike in New Hyde Park. Now, many of you know the story of John Favara he accidentally hits Frank Gotti, John Gotti's son. While he's riding a little motorized bike in Howard Beach on March 18th, 1980, that motorized bike belonging to a young kid at the time by the name of Kevin McMahon. And uh, we'll talk more about Kevin McMahon in a few. So after this happens, of course, many people view it as an accident. But, you know, many of us, if that happened to us, I mean, I'm sure the first reaction would be that you want the guy's head. But ultimately, you come to your senses and you say, you know what? It's an accident. And it's something you unfortunately have to live with, the tragedy. But being the status, being that these guys had the status they did and the power that they did, well, John Favara ultimately was not long for this world. And after this does happen, he's getting threats, John Favara. He's getting letters in the mailbox. He's getting, at one point his car got stolen. And then when they found it, it was spray painted with the words murderer on it. So this is the shit that was going on. Now, other things that were said after this happened was that some of the neighbors had reported that John Favar wasn't the greatest guy. He got out of his car and he started screaming and yelling about the kid under his car until he finally realized that it was Gotti's kid. I don't know how true any of that is. That's all neighbor stuff. That's all coming from the Gotti family. I don't know. So after a while, with the family in grief, something is decided that they have to do something about it. Some believe that Gotti's wife pressured him into doing it. You know, these are things that have been said over the years. Now, John Favara, another thing that's been said about him is that he was friends with the family of Ettore Zappi. Ettore Zappi is someone I spoke about a little bit in one of my other videos. He is a Gambino capo, powerful guy living out in Massapequa, Long Island. And actually a uh, porn magnet as well. When, um, it's funny actually, when Roy DeMeo kills Paul Rothenberg in 1973, in the summer of 1973, at the diner in Manhasset over there, which I did a video on, Ettore Zappi was actually one of the prime suspects in the Rothenberg murder because they had figured it was a mob thing and they knew that Zappi was in with the porn and they try to put a connection together there with Zappi and I believe even uh, Mickey Zaffirano was another one that was targeted. Of course, that thing, that murder uh, went unsolved for many years until later on in the 80s when we all found out about Roy's crew 
So apparently he appeals to a Tori Zappian family. Um, and they tell him to, you know, just go away. And eventually he's going to decide to go away. He's going to try to sell his house and get the hell out of Dodge, get out of Howard Beach. Let's look down this block. You got a little community here. All right. And at that time, Gotti, you know, he wasn't who he became. You know, in the papers, he's listed as a reported capo in the Gambino crime family, you know. So, of course, in Howard Beach, in those areas, they knew who he was. But the world at large, not so much. So, on July 28th, 1980, while Gotti and family is in Florida, John Favara is going to work. He's going to work at a place called Castro Convertibles. The Castro Convertibles is like, uh, you know, they make like um, sofa chairs, recliners, all you know, like living room furniture type stuff. And that place was located right here at 1990 Jericho Turnpike, New Hyde Park. Now, right now, this is a self-storage place. But at the time, this was Castro Convertible. Let's look down here. This was apparently a factory slash office for the Castro Convertible establishment. And I believe they disappeared for a while, but they might have made a resurgence at some point. Uh, Castro Convertibles, that is. So he leaves his uh, job here on July 28th of 1980. But little does he know that there is a hit team that is going to be waiting for him. I mentioned Kevin McMahon earlier, the one who gave little Frank Gotti the bike to use. Well, Kevin McMahon, as I spoke about in my Corneglia Brothers video, he ultimately gets, I think a little before this incident, he is brought in and adopted by the Corneglia family after John Corneglia finds him sleeping in, his, uh, in a pool house in his backyard. He's about 12 years old. So he would go on to do a lot of things for the family. He would help fix trials for Gotti. And ultimately, when John Cornegula, his real, I guess, father figure, went to prison, along with Gene Gotti, and I believe in 1989, he would fall deeper into murderous activity with Charles Corneglia. And as I mentioned in that video, He's involved in the murder of Louis de Bono. He was present for that. Uh, Kevin McMahon is present for the murder of armored truck guard Jose Delgado Rivera at JFK Airport. Um, these are just some of the things he had got involved in after being taken under the wing more by Charles. And in 2009, when he goes witness, we learn a lot about this stuff. And we'll get back to Kevin in a moment. So he's going to leave this area here. 1990 Jericho. Let's look at this address one more time. Former site of Castro Convertibles. On Jericho Turnpike in New Hyde Park. Long Island. So what he's going to do. Is he's going to go over here to a parking lot. At 1902 Jericho Turnpike. It is now a Chinese restaurant. 
used to be the site of a place called the Capitol Diner, right here at 1902 Jericho. It is now the Chef Wong Authentic Sichuan Sushi and Hot Pot. Hmm. I think they're focusing on uh, one too many cuisines there, so I don't know. Sometimes when uh, you get a place that's doing 12 different cuisines, it's like how professional, how legit is it, you know? Let's focus on one thing at a time, huh? <laughs> so we're at 1902 right here. Now in the news, now through my research, I was able to find out that that was where the Capitol Diner was at 1902. And what Favara does is, <clears throat> excuse me. He uses the Capitol Diner parking lot as his parking spot. Parking lot right here. So we are in the parking lot of the former Capitol Diner where John Favara was said to park his car. And he made his way over to this parking lot on July 28th, 1980. Now there's a hit team waiting for him. And I'm gonna run this down based on informants and based on what has been told in court and over the years. Across the street, there is a crash car consisting of Gene Gotti and Angelo Quack Quack Ruggiero. Close by, there is another car consisting of Willie Boy Johnson and Anthony Tony Roach Rampino. Now over here, there's gonna be a van that comes. There's gonna be a van, which is purported to be driven by John Corneglia. And he is going to be with Richard Redbird Gomes, who is a Providence guy, Providence, Rhode Island guy, mobster, who became friends with Gotti back in prison in Lewisburg and uh, he ended up being affiliated with this crew, doing, you know, doing damage in New York and Providence. And um, he passed in 2006. And uh, if you look him up, any articles, uh, the state of Rhode Island did not have a good opinion of Richard Redford Gomes. Basically, they uh, referred to him as a 24 seven gangster who was only interested in doing crime. So, and another man that was reportedly here, Ignazio Iguilania, was also said to be here in this parking lot. So what's gonna happen is Mr. John Favara is gonna come into this parking lot. He's going to get ambushed as he walks in to the back here. Now, apparently, John Corneglia shoots him twice with a 22. And there's actually a witness that says that a tall man hits John Favar with a two by four. They throw him in the van and they screech away. One of the assailants grabs his keys and drives his car away. And that is said to have happened in the parking lot of the former location of the Capitol Diner here at 1902 Jericho Turnpike in New Hyde Park, Long Island, New York, right here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk back to the Castro Convertibles and then we'll make our way back here and we'll talk a little bit. So after this happens, you know, Gotti is questioned at the Bergen about this. Even Gotti's wife is questioned. And uh, they seem not to care. According to law enforcement, they're quoted as saying, oh, I don't care, I don't care if he is missing. Basically, just very nonchalant about his uh, whereabouts. Nobody cares. They don't know. Anybody with a brain would know, though. But it's a matter of connecting people to the crime. That's always what it comes down to. So once again, right here in 1990, former site, Castro Convertible.
So if you look at my channel, I did a video where I walked through the hole in Lindenwood, which was a mafia burial ground. Now, at one point in the early 2000s, they were trying to find John Favara's body there. Ultimately, they found two of the three capos there from the Bonanno crime family, Philip Giacconi, Big Trinchera. They did not find John Favara. It would be in 2009 when Kevin McMahon, the young kid who gave Frank Gotti the motorbike that day that was adopted by the Corneglia family. At that time, he was in his early 40s. In 2009, he's gonna cooperate. It's a little noisy. Now what Kevin McMahon is gonna say is that after this happens, they immediately go to the Fountain Avenue junkyard where I went to in the video that I did on the Conegli brothers. I believe that address is 651 Fountain Avenue if I remember correctly. They're gonna go there and they're gonna crush his car. And then they're gonna hand him over to Mr. Charles Carneglia. Who at that time, according to Kevin McMahon, is experimenting in the disposal of human remains via acid inside a barrel. Probably some kind of, um, if you've ever seen Breaking Bad, you know, maybe some like plastic thing that could sustain acid or some kind of metal i know in court they were barred from using the term acid when this was actually on trial for some reason um but some kind of dissolving agent let's say that and apparently that is what happened to john favaro he ended up at the junkyard on fountain avenue and was dissolved in a barrel by charles carniglia and that is apparently the story I just realized I was filming this whole thing a little bit zoomed in, so I hope the video is not screwed up. Bad day for me, it's really early. So we're in the parking lot, once again, of the former Capitol Diner, where John Favar was abducted in July, 1980, by a hit team sent by John Gotti. The hit team, according to informants, consisting of Gene Gotti, Angelo Quack Quack Ruggiero, Tony Rotrampino, Wilfred Willie Boy Johnson, John Carniglia, and Ignazio Iguilania. Right here in Jericho, Turnpike, and New Hyde Park, Long Island. In that stupid Gotti movie from the 90s, obviously it's Sammy the Bull, you know, under the fucking, under the tunnel in the park, and they leave him dead in the street, you know. I say stupid because, you know, I hate when movies just like, make shit up it's a good movie I, I mean i think it's a good movie but <laughs> as a movie it's a good movie let's put it that way but uh you know i just hate when i hate embellishing in movies even though back then you know to their credit they didn't know the full extent nobody really knew except for the people that were involved um, so i think that's gonna wrap it up ladies and gentlemen 1902 Jericho Turnpike, former site of the Capitol Diner in the parking lot location where in July of 1980, John Favara is abducted, taken to the Fountain Avenue junkyard owned by the Coneglia brothers. His car crushed and his body dissolved and he's never to be seen again. And nobody, nobody does time for this murder. Particular, uh, specifically. Now, these guys did other time. We don't have to get into all that. But no justice for the family of Mr. Favara. None whatsoever. I hope everybody has a great week coming up. And I hope you enjoyed this little walk and talk here in Long Island. As always, thank you. If you'd like to support my channel, there's a cash app in my about section. 
and you could also leave a super thanks. The super thanks button is listed on the top where you can give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate any donations. It definitely helps. Gas is high. Everybody, have a great week.